Hello everyone and welcome back to Imperato Realm. I'm Lord Forend here with another guide. This time we're going to go over religion. Um, specifically, we're going to focus on on deities slash prophets and the benefit of deifying people and general religion overall. So religion is one of the things that exists in game. Obviously, there are plenty of different religions. I'm going to try and touch on most of them, if not all of them, that I can. Probably not going to go into some of the stuff like the Matriists or Jainism because it's very hard to find nations with those. But I'll try and cover most of the major ones. Um, most of the deities are pretty much copy-paste versions of each other in different religions. Sometimes with slightly best benefit. We're going to try and go over what the most beneficial deities slash prophets to have. And um, why religion matters. So every population in the game has a religion. Um... And within a country, obviously, part of their happiness is due to their religion. See, these guys, happy. We go to a Jewish one. Governor is Hellenic. The Jewish population in our lands does not like being governed by someone of a different religion. Obviously, this isn't a major issue because a vast majority of our country is Hellenic. But if we conquered a whole area of, say, we conquered Jerusalem, all of a sudden the Jewish population that was unhappy would be even larger. Um, thankfully, the game creators decided to make both Roman and Greek religions just general Hellenic, even though the names change uh, between Latin and Greece. They are pretty similar, so those two function at the same. Um, obviously, there are many different religions, and within a single province, a single religion, as you can see, there are different concentrations of the religion. Uh, if you want to get to this map mode, obviously you click religious and then you click on the specific religion you wish to examine in depth and you can see the spread of it. As you can see, it says this is Hellenic, but when we click on this, you'll see that you also have some Zalmoxin population in there as well. Uh, this will get very useful if you want to see where things overlap, like uh, the Kemetic, how much Hellenic is actually in the Kemetic lands. Uh, at the start of the game, uh, not much, but as the game goes on, that will change. So, the other thing to realize is certain nations, um, mostly through DLCs and expansions, have different deities available to them. For example, we're here at Sparta, because Sparta has a couple of these. Sparta has, for their deity of war at the beginning of the game, Athena. I'm not going to even try that last name. Basically, they made Athena, as you can hover over this, you can see that Athena is warfare here. However, if we go down to the Hellenic deity of culture here, we can actually have Athena here as our deity of culture. Athena is normally a cultural deity. However, some nations like Sparta, Athens, and I believe Syracuse have different incarnations of her. Uh, other nations have stuff mostly the major nations rome carthage the successors um most of your standard tribal nations or small nations will probably not have a unique deity and the unique deity is usually better than other deities there are some exceptions um in this case she provides legion maintenance and discipline which makes her better than Ares, which provides starting experience and morale um but if you didn't have athena um, Ares would not be a bad one at early on for morale or Heracles here with discipline and unintegrated culture happiness. But some of these other ones like naval maintenance, integrated happiness, manpower recovery, not so great. So the rule of thumb for a war deity is you ideally want discipline and morale together. If you can't get that, you want discipline, you want morale early game and then discipline as the game goes on. Um, in this case, getting discipline and a legion maintenance is very useful if we were able to raise a legion, which we can't. Um, so stacking those together, pretty useful. In this case, out of all of these options at the beginning of the game for the Hellenics, I would probably go with either Heracles or Ares, assuming we didn't have Athena, in which case I still might consider Heracles because we can't have legions and the unintegrated culture happiness is nice if we had any non-integrated cultures. Um, so just be aware that um, morale, discipline, maintenance, unintegrated culture happiness, and then manpower recovery are the ones you want to focus on. I've never seen a benefit really from having a uh, naval 
deity, mainly because I don't do a lot of naval warfare, because it's not overwhelmingly needed unless you're fighting someone like Carthage. Okay, economy. So, again, Sparta has a unique deity, Apollo something, uh, and you can, if you play them, you can read that description. Uh, citizen happiness and commerce income. Uh, this is actually a very good deity. The other options we have is Hephaestus, military tech investment, fort maintenance. Yeah. Hades, build cost and tax. This could be useful if you have a tax-based economy. And then you have Hermes here, which has a passive effect of commerce income that's actually better than what Apollo supplies with Freeman Happiness. So between the existing Apollo one and the Hermes one, I might actually go with Hermes because that commerce income will apply for the rest of the game, whereas Apollo's only applies when I activate it through the Omen for five years, and then I have to wait time after that to get it back. Although the Citizen Happiness is very nice, but I would probably switch to Hermes Right now in the game, you want the deity that gives you commerce because commerce is the commerce is by and large the most productive way to make money in this game right now. Now we get to culture. Culture is a pretty important one. Um, you've got multiple uh, deities, at least in the Hellenic, for culture. Some of them are better than others. Um, by and large, the best one for your culture, if you're going to play. Um, wide is a deity that gives aggressive expansion reduction per month some religions and i'll note them when i find them in this video uh have aggressive expansion reduction as a passive effect which is amazing if you're going to play uh wide if you're playing tall you probably want um something that either gives you political power happiness or if you're really lucky you get something like down here you get research points some deities have these as passives basically all of these can be flipped on different deities. In this case, Sparta has a unique one that gives uh, oratory tech investment. So we're here. If we activate it, and then we go back, and we hover over here. Um, oh, it hasn't applied yet. Um, or has it? I haven't been paying attention. Uh, oratory. If we click up here, you'll see the oratory tech increase increases the monthly it does not increase like the progress so in this case we get 7.5 more uh research in that than we do in the other categories so although it's good it's not an amazing one just to clarify that because some people have asked questions about what that means um, obviously we can't change it in my opinion the aggressive expansion is the best for a nation that's going to play wide which means wide means conquering lots of lands if you're playing tall political influence, um, tax, um, build cost, um, and the, the, uh, or research are all very good. And then you get to the one that I find to be the least useful one, which is fertility. We've got a unique one here as Sparta. Um, this is Helen from, you know, the Trojan War. Uh, basically, the deity of fertility tends to provide food, population growth, population capacity, supply limit, or just general global food. Since food is not a immense issue right now, I would probably switch away to a deity that gives manpower um, or population growth. Uh, a deity like Demeter, Demeter here is really good uh, if you want to build up your population to high, high levels and have a very populated, very concentrated nation. Um, it works both very good on small nations and large nations, that type one. Um, overall, though, I found the fertility food deities to be less than impressive. So that is roughly the Hellenic ones. Um, I would probably definitely change uh, away from Helen. I would probably go with Demeter or... Um, uh, either Artemis or Dionysus, because this gives manpower recovery, which can be very useful, and this gives happiness, which is also very useful. Overall, though, less important. The deity one, I tend to do a commerce. The culture one, depends if I'm playing wide, aggressive expansion reduction, if I'm playing tall, research, or another investment one. And deity, you want discipline or morale. So let's take a look away from Hellenic, and let's go with... 
Let's go with Druidic culture, uh, religion, because that will be the next most interesting one. Okay, here we are in Gaul as Avernia, and let's take a look at what deities are available to the Druidic religion. So as you can see, there's also uh, deities here that provide war score cost. Um, but see, this one has a passive effect of discipline, whereas when we were in the Hellenics, it was almost always a activated omen effect, which to my mind would make this deity here, which gives a passive discipline, stronger than the one that gives an omen activated one. Passive's almost always better than activated. However, under the war deity here, we have one that gives aggressive expansion change. This is could be very useful if you're going to be playing wide, um, especially in this case, because the Druidic culture also just has a passive aggressive. You stack those two and you're gonna be at negative 0.07 a month that will grow as obviously your omen power increases. Um, that is a very powerful aggressive expansion reduction. Uh, for the Druidic nation. So out of these, um, I might pick this one if I'm going to be doing a lot of fighting against equal strength nation. If I'm going to be growing wide, I'd probably take this one. The Legion maintenance cost is pretty good as well. In terms of economy, as you can see, this deity here gives discipline and tax. Again, we want to stack discipline, so we might even take this as well and get six free discipline at the start. But as you can see, we have one with a passive commerce. Passive commerce is a pretty common one. Um, citizen output is nice if we were a civilized nation, but we're not. Um, obviously, here's a religious tech compared to the oratory one that the Spartan unique deity had. And down here, we've got noble happiness and commerce. So out of these, I might stick with this one for the discipline early on for fighting wars. Um, but once I get to a large enough size or I was conquering everyone around me, I might swap to the commerce income. As you can see, they don't have a decreased uh, build cost or tax deity, which is interesting. Um, let's move to culture. As you can see, we've got one here, aggressive expansion reduction and war exhaustion. This is a very good deity. The passive aggressive expansion reduction is amazing. And the war exhaustion upon activation is very useful, especially because as a tribe, you're going to be using plenty of levies. So other ones, as you can see, we've got some like research speed and pop assimilation speed can be very useful if we were a civilized nation with the Druidic religion. But basically all Druidic religions at the beginning of the game are tribes. Um, if we were playing tall research points, assimilation speed, very good. Um, down here we got stuff like state religion happiness, which can be good if you've got a lot of population of your religion, but not necessarily of your culture. This will make them, this will offset the not being of your culture penalty. Up here, this one with monthly civilization change. I don't find the monthly civilization change particularly useful in my games, but everyone to their own. I'm sure somebody has a use for it. Popularity gain is nice. Um, you can stack it so your ruler's at 100% popularity, all the modifiers in the game. But I've never found ruler popularity to make an immense difference except in republics and for heirs. So overall, I think the Druidic one starts out with the best. Ogmos, Ogmios probably starts out as the best culture deity for the Druidic religion I see. As you can see, they've got Rose Merta. Yes, that's pretty similar to the one that in Harry Potter. Um, and we've got population growth, manpower recovery speed. The other options are capacity, tribal happiness, food, and attrition. Uh, we might consider the attrition if we're getting invaded by someone like Rome. The hostile attrition will help slow them down, uh, but it would come at the cost of activating like a war deity omen. Uh, overall, though, I think they probably started with the best one. The growth and upon activation manpower recovery speed is really good. So let's switch to... Oh, let's just start over here and work our way over. Iberic is the next one. Okay, here we are in Iberia. I just picked a random one here out of this yellow nation. Doesn't make a huge difference. Let's check out their deities. So their war one is starting is reinforcement and morale. Their other options are experience, decay, and discipline, and then legion maintenance and manpower. Overall, I would say they have pretty bad war deities. Um, this one with the morale of armies and reinforcement can be nice, as could the discipline. The experience decay is going to get you traditions faster, I guess. Um, if you go to war, you'll get a longer benefit from it. Could be useful. 
Um, overall though, not overwhelmingly impressed. This one with Legion maintenance and manpower recovery speed, virtually useless for our purposes at the beginning of a game um, when you don't have a Legion. And as a tribe, manpower has other ways of regenerating, but could be useful if you need manpower. Overall though, probably stick with this one, maybe swap to this one as the game goes on. Those would be uh, my recommendations. In terms of economy, we've got an assimilation speed and commerce income. That's actually pretty good. Going to mean more people with the culture and some income. Other choices, very limited at least on this country. There might be other options otherwhere. Uh, claim fabrication speed and slave output, terrible. Stick with the existing Melkort here. Actually, Melkort is a Canaanite deity. It's not even Iberic. So the only Iberic one we have an option is this one. Uh, that's another thing I'll explain later, is you can mix and match Pantheon deities um, if you've got uh, of the culture. So we could swap from an Iberic culture of deity to a Canaanite, which would improve the opinion of Canaanite population living in your territory, but would hurt the conversion speed to Iberic and would hurt your Iberic culture's happiness a bit, I believe. So let's go with, we'll just stick with the Iberic and we'll look into the other stuff later. So culture. State religion, unintegrated culture, group happiness. Not really that bad, although I can't actually see, oh, there it is, 3.52 unintegrated culture, group happiness. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, this would help keep your lands happier. The other options we have is, as you can see here, is another Greek one we didn't have when we were looking at uh, Sparta, if I remember. The other Iberic ones, we got diplomatic reputation, conversion speed, and we have Monthly tyranny and provincial loyalty. The provincial loyalty one shows up throughout the world. It can be very useful, uh, keeping rebellious provinces happy. It never really gets above 0.05. Uh, like I've stacked, I've stacked the omen power as high as I can get it, and it still doesn't provide a huge benefit. But provincial loyalty is hard to come by in the game passively, so it can be very useful. Out of these three Iberic ones, we have the option on this nation. I'd probably go with the diplomatic reputation, which would help with diplomacy, but more importantly, the conversion speed would help make people of swap to the Iberic religion. Um, although I, in this case, might even consider flipping to a Canaanite one for the aggressive expansion re impact reduction. Um, but if you want to go with Iberic, the other one's better. In terms of Deity of Fertility, the game has put a Hellenic one on here. Um, if we were to go with Iberic, we'd have Tribesman Output, Global Food, useful if you're a tribe, um, Global Food, and State Religion Happiness. Overall, I'm not very impressed by the Iberic religion in this game. Um, it's almost like they're designed to go with other culture, other religion deities. Um, it's interesting that we don't always have access to all the deities of a different pantheon. They are somewhat regionally locked, so there might be other deities through here I'm not finding. Um, I'm sure you could go to the Wiki, Wikipedia and find more. Out of these, I might switch to this one for the tribesman output if I'm a tribe. Otherwise, I'd probably stick with that religious deity, uh, that cultural deity. In terms of for uh, in terms of fertility, oh, sorry, um, sorry, I probably would stick with um, Demeter if I had an option here, uh, or swap to this one for the Iberic. Anyway, that's the Iberic culture, uh, sorry, the Iberic religion. Obviously, there's different deities around the map and holy sites, but we'll get into holy sites later. Let's switch to Canaanite religion, look at what basically Carthage has as their religion. So here we are with the Canaanite religion. So Canaanite is kind of interesting because it comes from uh, the Middle East here, Canaan, which is this area here. Um, but Carthage was settled from Phoenicia, so it actually ends up over here as well. Um, so let's look at what they've got for religious deities. So in terms of war, um, we have multiple choices. The starting one, unintegrated culture group happiness. Uh, which is pretty nice, although I can't actually see what the passive effect is here. So let's find um, uh, It's 3.75 at the start of the game So that's actually pretty useful and triggered culture group happiness is hard to come across It's pretty useful plus the discipline the other options eh, morale is always pretty decent 
Popularity, manpower, eh. Ship repair at sea could be useful because in this case we're Carthage, so ships automatically repairing, useful. Um, and then these other two are megalithic, which we'll get into later. Overall though, I think they probably gave you the best starting deity. The only other one here, a knot for morale might be useful. In terms of economy, we got assimilation, commerce. Other options are happiness, civ tech investment, or passive commerce. I might swap to the passive commerce, although the morale of navies is less useful. Having the almost double national commerce bonus income from the start of the game passively, so we keep it all the time, will make us more money. Down here we got uh, a unique one, I believe, here for Carthage. Most people just get the basic ball. Yes, this is the ball from the Bible, for those of you who've studied uh Christianity and Judaism, um, or I guess Islam too. And uh, the aggressive expansion change reduction, very useful. Tyranny, not as much, but could help considering we're a republic and tyranny is an issue. Other options, we got some research citizen. If you're going to play tall, this is the one to go for. This is about the best uh, tall deity you can get. Research citizen output, which also boosts research, uh, very useful. We've got a aggressive expansion impact reduction. Um, passively can be very useful. Um, stacking uh, impact reduction is very useful. I would much rather have a monthly aggressive expansion reduction. Um, just overall, I find the tiny picking away at it better because I launch lots of small wars. But if you're launching a massive war, that will give you 5% I guess, less aggressive expansion, which is useful. Popularity, less less so. Down here we got a passive corruption reduction, which can be very powerful because corruption reduction is hard to get except through government idea basically and a couple innovations. Um, so that could be very useful. Plus the provincial loyalty um, from activating its omen can be useful to hold together a empire that has lots of different cultures. Down here, citizen happiness, civilization, eh, probably not that great. Population growth, um, I guess it could be good if you stack it with a fertility deity, you could get a lot of growth. But overall, I wouldn't take it, not even for the integrated culture happiness. Now we just got passive integrated culture happiness and corruption. Uh, don't take this one either. If you're going to get go for corruption, get the passive one and the loyalty. Uh, you should never really be having happiness issues with integrated cultures unless you embrace too many of them. In terms of fertility, we've got food and manpower recovery uh other options freeman food population freeman or population growth but this is megalithic so there's actually not a population growth for the canaanite one except it's under culture oddly enough almost kind of feels like it was misplaced it almost feels like hadad here should be a canaanite deity of fertility rather than a culture uh out of these ones I might go with the Freeman happiness. The rest are not very useful. Um, so that's the Canaanite one for Carthage. Let's swap over to Megalithic. Um, obviously the smaller religions have less interesting stuff, but we got a long way to go. So I'm gonna speed this up as fast as I can. Okay, here we are right next to Carthage. We're going to look through Megalithic. So we got a monthly experience gain. Um, for their starting war deity for this nation and morale of armies. Pretty useful, uh, getting traditions. Uh, the other option is discipline manpower. Depends if you wanna have a stronger army at the start and lots of troops, or you wanna passively gain experience and have uh, morale. I would probably, if I was fighting wars, swap to this deity. Otherwise I'd stick with this one for the growth. If you're drilling a legion or something, it would be pretty useful as well. Uh, this one's been a Canaanite. It's been replaced by Canaanite, but if we go back to Megalithic, we get commerce and morale. I'd probably swap to the commerce. Uh, it's gonna be more useful having it passive than otherwise. Then here we got culture, we got research. Apparently this is the only one available to us, so you have to stick with it. Research points, pretty good. If you're civilized, if you're a tribe, eh, not so much. Um, civilization change could be useful though. Fertility, we got a growth. The other only option is apparently a comedic deity, so you're stuck with that one. As you can see, smaller religions have less options available to them. They really should have more. So let's jump up to... Tuistic, although not many of you are going to play that, so we'll go through it rather quickly.
Okay, we're up. Okay, we're up here in the Tuistic lands. Burgundia is the nation we're on. So let's look at the Tuistics. Uh, experience decay morale of armies looks very similar to the megalithic one we just looked at. Other options, morale and no CB war cost. That's a unique one. I haven't seen that elsewhere. Uh, CB war cost reduction. I assume that hurts your stability less. Why would you be declaring wars without CBs? You should almost always declare wars with CBs. Um, morale is nice. I guess this is so if you wanted to invade across an ocean in conquer land without a claim it would be more useful. Uh, these are basically the precursors to the Vikings up here. Um, I'd probably stick with the existing starting deity of war. Uh, if I was invading across oceans, this might be useful. Economy already started with commerce and slave output. That's about the best you can get. Food capacity, tribal element. Why? I guess food capacity boosts growth, and the output is not bad, but I'd stick with this starting one here, Nehalina. Uh, Dative culture, stability change, corruption, those are both good. Stability change is positive. Stability change is hard to come by. It'll help you keep you more stable. Other options, provincial loyalty passively and ruler popularity gain. Both of those are really good. I wish those one of those was a Hellenic deity. Um, I guess the culture one's good if you're the existing one, Alesis here or whatever. Alsis, better if you're playing tall. This one, better if you're playing wide. Uh, in terms of fertility, we got a tribesman happiness, useful early on. Um, global food, monthly modifier, less as much. And over here, we got population growth and war exhaustion. Considering tribesmen are happy in tribes, I'd probably flip to the national population growth. Next religion, we'll do Matrist, just because most of these small religions have nothing, and then we'll work our way into some of the more interesting religions. Okay, here we are looking at the Matrist religion. So, sort of experience, manpower, recovery speed, not bad. Supply limit, morale of armies. If you want to fight a war, go with this one with the morale of armies. Deity, stability, change, commerce, income, pretty useful. Other option... Military tech investment, slave output. This one would be better if you're playing tall. This is the one you should take otherwise for the income and stability. We've got culture, popularity, tyranny, or um, integrated culture, happiness, loyalty, conversion speed, state happiness. This one's not so much great, the existing one. If you're going to play wide, take the governing goddesses. Otherwise, take this one for the conversion speed. Deity, we got food, aggressive expansion change, and that's the only one we have, so I guess you have to stick with it. Aggressive expansion change on a fertility deity is very interesting, though. Um, could be pretty useful if you're playing wide. Let's jump to uh, Zalmoxian, and then we'll move quickly through the other ones. Some of them I may not talk about. Okay, here we are, Zalmoxian religion. Let's see what we got here. Popularity, tribesman happiness, nope. Uh, Legion Maintenance Morale, take this one if you want to fight a war, play tall, keep the existing Sal Sabazos. Deity of Economy, we got a huge income one and Citizen Happiness. Other option, Tax and Tyranny, stick with the Commerce Citizen Happiness. Culture, we got aggressive Expansion and Religious Tech Investment. Other options, Research Point Civilization. Take this existing one if you want to play wide, take this one if you want to play tall. Zalmoxis of the Zalmoxian religion, I guess. Interesting. Uh, for fertility, population growth, ruler popularity, other option, capacity, and food modifier. Stick with this one for the population growth. Uh, next religion, Heptatic, I guess. Uh, okay, here we are with Heptatic. I want to apologize. I think I cut off some of my words there at the end of it, uh, the last one, um, pausing the recording. Uh, so we got a uh, deity of war, noble happiness, which is we haven't seen anywhere else. Morale of navies, um, virtually useless for warfare. Uh, the other options, however, are Hellenic. I might go Heracles here. He's pretty good war deity. Uh, this one for the noble happiness is nice, but you're not going to have a lot of nobles as a tribe, tribal nation. So eh. I, this might be a deity I'd replace with another religion's deity, Heracles. Uh, we got stability, war exhaustion, pretty good. Doesn't have much to do with the economy. Other option is noble happiness, commerce. I guess if I wanted to make money, I'd go with this one for, and then keep activating the omen for the commerce. 
Otherwise, it might be worth sw swapping to Hermes if you had a lot of Hellenic and doing the commerce income. Culture, research points, civilization change, not bad. The other option is tax, unintegrated culture happiness. If you're gonna play tall, take this one. If you're gonna play wide, unintegrated culture happiness would be useful. Otherwise, it might be worth swapping the Hellenic and taking Zeus here for the aggressive expansion reduction. Fertility, food, tribesmen. Um, the other option is population growth manpower. Uh, I'd honestly swap to the population growth manpower one. Uh, there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of little religions. Uh, let's go with Kemetic, and then we've only got a handful left. Okay, here we are in Kush, the a, the major Kemetic religion. Um, they start out with discipline, fort defense. Other options, reinforcement, manpower, yuck, no CB war, discipline. I'd honestly probably stick with the existing one, Sekhmet, here for the discipline and fort defense. Passive discipline is always nice. Um, Anubis, economy, tax, slave. The other option is Hathor, happiness, and food modifier. I'd stick with Anubis. They don't seem to have a commerce one, which is slightly disappointing. So tax, slave, happiness is probably the next best. Osiris, we got... Ruler popularity and integrated culture. Other options, aggressive expansion, Freeman output, state religion, religious tech, civ tech, uh, national citizen output. I'd probably switch to this one, Amun, for the aggressive expansion reduction if I was playing wide. Otherwise, I might stick with Osiris if I'm playing tall. And then we got Isis, food, unintegrated culture group happiness of 4%. Other option is raw, food, and slave output. I I probably stick with Isis if I'm playing tall, uh, playing wide, raw if I'm playing tall. Uh, let's switch over to Arabic then, and then we'll go north from there. Okay, here we are with Arabic religion in this time game. So we have deity of war, manpower, uh, monthly experience, manpower, or our other option is cohort experience and morale of armies. Neither of them are that great. I'd switch to the one with morale on activation if you want to fight wars. Otherwise, monthly experience will help you get more traditions. Uh, deity of economy, provincial loyalty, citizen, or capital import routes, which is relatively unique, and commerce income. I would swap, swap to this one for uh, a tall nation because you want the income. I might still stick with it. If you're playing wide, the provincial loyalty would be nice. In terms of culture, we have research and citizen, or we have aggressive expansion reduction, untreated culture happiness. You guys know my love for passive uh, aggressive expansion change, so probably would take this one, which would do the aggressive expansion reduction. Um, swap to that one. Fertility, we have food or population. We have a food food modify. Population, food modifier, or food tax. I'd take this one for the tax if you're going to do it. Uh, but both of those, neither of them are particularly great. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to do probably Jewish. Or maybe, we'll, actually, we'll save Jewish for probably the end. So let's do Sibylline here, and then we'll work our way this way. There is a lot of little religions up here. Uh, we already did Canaanite, though, so it should be easier. Sibylline next, I guess. Okay, here we are in northern Anatolia with the Sibylline religion. So, um, they have two, it appears. They have no CB war cost and discipline or war score fabrication speed. Neither of them are particularly good. <clears throat> if I had to pick one of the religion, I'd go for the discipline one here. Um, but swapping to someone like Heracles for the war and uh, unintegrated culture, happiness, and discipline might also be useful. <clears throat> uh, then they've got a Hellenic deity of culture. Basically, they've got all Hellenics. Civ um, <clears throat> tech investment, yeah, not great. Tax passively is good. War exhaustion. Again, this might be one taking Hermes for the uh, commerce is good. Otherwise, take the tax is my advice. We've got Zeus in there. We don't want Zeus if we're going to go with Sibylline. Sibylline, maybe. Um... Tyranny, loyalty, good if you're playing wide. Uh, otherwise, supply ships, divine sacrifice, eh. 
Curse of Expansion and Divine Sacrifice, though, not bad. Um, this will make it easier to keep stability from Aggressive Expansion and redu reduce it. This one might be the one I take here. Um, this one's not bad for holding together an Empire, though. Fertility, um, food, civilization, eh. Population growth, assimilation speed, much better. But again, taking a Hellenic deity would not be a big issue. Uh, next religion, Kaldik. I don't know anything about this one, so this is going to be interesting. Well, that's awkward. There doesn't actually seem to be a country existing at the beginning with the Kaldik religion. Um, I'm looking around. We've got Zoroastrianism, or we've got Armazic. Armazic. Um, so I guess we'll go with Armazic here. Um, since there's none of that one. So I can't actually show you that one unless I wanted to do some gameplay. And right now, this has already gone long enough. Uh, reinforcement speed, manpower for war, other options. Uh, actually, this is a Kaldic deity, so we can actually show some of it. Not a very good war deity. The other war deity from Kaldic is war score uh, morale. I guess morale would be worth more. Um, in terms of our Mazic, um, this one would give you the most combat strength. Morale and manpower. This one for a large empire, passive loyalty and tyranny, very useful as well. Take this one if you want to conquer things. Take this one if you're huge and play, having stability. In terms of deity, we can show you the two Kal Kaldic. I don't know how you say it, so my apologies. Uh, noble happiness, citizen output. Uh, if you're playing tall, not bad. Otherwise, slave output tax, probably better. Otherwise, it looks like they have one of their uh, Armazic religion. So popularity, aggressive expansion, not bad. Good, obviously, for reducing a... In terms of fertility deity, let's look at the Kaldic here. We got population growth, war exhaustion, uh, or provincial loyalty, integrated culture happiness. I would probably take this one for the loyalty if you're expanding, this one if you're playing tall. In terms of our Mazic, uh, food, army weight, not very useful. Population growth, citizen, or Freeman, global food. I'd take the population and the citizen. Two religions in one. Interesting. Uh, let's hit Chaldean, and then we will do... We'll keep going. There's a lot to do. Okay, we've run across the same issue we had with um, Chaldeic. There is no Chaldean religion nation at the beginning of the game. So the best I can do is look at it from this Lucid's perspective. So, um, Chaldean options. Morale, manpower. Morale is pretty good. Man monthly month military experience or discipline. It's between the morale and the discipline. Uh, at beginning of the game, take morale. Later on, probably take the experience and discipline. Uh, Freeman output and morale, less than useful. Uh, in terms of economy, we actually have one in position in the Seleucids. Research popularity, obviously research is good for tall. Other option is commerce and corruption. I would take the commerce one for the money, um, if you want the economy. Otherwise, this for tall. For culture, it's already in place. Noble state religion, not bad, uh, not great either. Other options, we have citizen happiness, religious tech, or provincial loyalty, aggressive expansion. Uh, you're much better off with the provincial loyalty, aggressive expansion. That'll help keep a large nation stable. Otherwise, I would stick with Marduk here for uh, a tall nation. In terms of fertility, we have one option, uh, which is Sin. Population and food. Uh, this is a deity I would replace with one from a different religion. Not very great. Next, let's do ritualistic bond, and then we'll come back to Zoroastrian and Jewish later because they are special. Okay, here we are. Here we are with ritualistic. So, ritualistic is one of those ones you could almost miss. Um, <clears throat> looks like they've got rituals rather than per se deities. So, starting experience, morale of armies, or discipline, freeman happiness. I would go for war, probably for the discipline. Later on, early on, morale is pretty useful. Uh, economy, commerce, unintegrated culture, group happiness, or tax, slave output, take the commerce one. Commerce always makes more money. Culture, popularity, state religion, or unintegrated culture, happiness, civilization change. 
Um, these are about equal in my mind. I might go with the state religion happiness because it'll keep my population happier. Those of all my religion, not necessarily my culture. Uh, war ceremony here, we got manpower, provincial loyalty, or population capacity. Tribesmen, go with the manpower, provincial loyalty. It'll probably help more in the long run. Next one, we're going to hit Bon. Okay, here we are. Bon religion time. Let's see what they've got. Starting experience, manpower recovery. Uh, other options, political power, morale of armies. I'd probably take the political influence and morale of armies. Deity, noble, and commerce. Going to be better probably than research and citizen for a nation that needs money. If you want to play tall, this is going to help more. Research and citizen output for tall. This one for wide, probably. Culture, legion maintenance, provincial loyalty. Good for a wide nation. If you're going to play tall, eh, actually both of these are for wide nation. This one might help you have more allies to resist an invasion from the south if you're born. Um, this one for a wide nation. This one for a defensive nation that needs allies. Fertility, population growth, popularity. Definitely going to be better than food and tribesmen. So... Population growth, popularity is better. Next one, we're going to hit Hindu, and at the same time, we're also going to hit uh, Buddhist and Jain. So that should be interesting. Okay, we're finally in India here, fully in India. Um, so uh, India is interesting because it's got Bon, Hindu, and Jainism all existing in the same area. So let's hit Hindu first, then we'll go through and do the other options. So starting out, we got Vishnu, Provincial Loyalty, very good for a wide empire. Fort Defense, not so great for war, good for stability. We got Shiva here, Aggressive Expansion Reduction and Discipline, uh, very good deity. Um, aggressive Expansion Chain, always solid, and Discipline helps as well. Um, we've got um, Manpower and Freeman Output. Man manpower is not bad, but between Morale Recovery and Manpower, uh, this one if you want Morale, otherwise I'd go with Shiva up here for Discipline and Growth. We got Hindu Economy, we've got Tax and Slave, uh, Civ Tech. Um, ship damage, commerce, or corruption and wages. Uh, this one down here, corruption and wages is pretty powerful, but if you want income, I might actually stick with the one for tax and the slave output rather than taking this one because the ship damage is pretty useful, useless, um, but the commerce income could be good. So overall, not really sure which one would be better there. This one, if you're a huge empire, would be very useful. Uh, fertility, we've got um, Hindu stability, population, uh, so we've got assimilation, oratory tech, stability, population happiness, slave output, population growth. Uh, this one might be worth keeping to get culture in place, otherwise um, stability, population happiness. Even though the population growth and slave output is nice, stability is not to be underestimated. This one totally useless. Interestingly, we have a Jain one here, um, population and uh, population capacity. Uh, this is interesting because as Jain, as you promote Jainism and Buddhism, they co convert people in the uh, faith. Um, not a very great deity here or paradigm of fertility for Jainism. We'll just put it at that. Uh, oddly enough, I can't show the Buddhist one, so we're going to have to find a nation that does that. So um, I will be back once I find a nation. These ones are Buddhist, so we're going to be those guys. Okay, here we are. Buddhism time. Uh, so Buddhism is a rising religion at this point, so it's not massively widespread, so it's interesting. So rather than deities, we have paradigms. Um, morale, fort defense, other options are manpower, military, tech, or legion and noble happiness. Uh, I would probably stick with this one for the morale and fort defense. For economy, diplomatic relations, conversion speed, noble happiness, commerce, tax, or corruption. Uh, if you need allies and want a stable Buddhist country, this is good. But for commerce, I'd probably go with this one. Uh, the commerce income economy boost is very useful as is the noble happiness it's a low commerce boost income but it's pretty good this one 
if you have a lot of tax, I guess. Uh, culture, corruption, happiness, other options we have. Civilization, provincial loyalty, obviously better if you're a wide nation. Uh, research, civilization, if you're tall, might be worth taking. This one's not wonderful. Uh, and then we got the paradigm of culture. Uh, you can convert more to Buddhism if you activate it. We'll go into a little bit more about why there's a person picture there in a minute. Uh, that's going to be more for Judaism. We'll explain that. Um, overall, I'd probably take this one if I'm playing tall, this one if I'm playing wide. Fertility, let's see. Um, wanderings of Buddha, provincial loyalty, and entry culture happiness. Perfect for a large empire. Um, happiness and aggressive expansion if you're expanding a lot. Doesn't really, some of these deities I'm noticing are not really fitting in their slots properly. Um, this one, not worth it. No population growth in fertility, which is interesting. Um, I'll probably take this one for a wide empire. No Janus stuff. Um, it doesn't seem to be a Janus country, which is unfortunate for me wanting to show you that. We saw one Janus one, and that's about it. Jainism is not meant to be a dominating religion. So let's jump to Zoroastrianism and then Ju uh, Jewish Judaism to finish it off. Okay, here we are. Armenia. Zoroastrianism. Armenia is the largest Zoroastrian nation, so we're going to go with them. Uh, manpower, recovery speed, fort defense, not very good. Reinforcement morale, if you need morale, it's okay. It's a very low morale bonus. Um, I'd probably take the morale reinforcement speed over recovery and fort defense. Um, that is not Zoroastrian. So tax, civtech, commerce, build cost. I'd probably take the commerce and build cost. Everyone, You should know by now my like for commerce income. Culture. We have three. We have religion, corruption. We have religion, happiness, and population happiness. Both are pretty not great. Up here, this is a basically a deified ruler, um, Zoroaster himself. Uh, provincial loyalty and conversion, plus he converts population to his faith. That is definitely the best one. Um, the conversion speed, free culture conversion, and loyalty is going to be aggressive expansion change every time. And down here we have um, fertility, um, food, happy, freeman happiness, terrible. Our other option is wages and noble happiness, neither of which are great. I'd probably take the wages and noble happiness. Finally, we hit Jewish Judaism, and this is going to be the longest segment for a while. Okay, here we go. Judea. So for those of you who have watched my economy guide, you'll know that I have a great fondness for Judea in terms of economy, but their religion is also probably the strongest at the start of the game. Uh, we've seen a couple deified people in Jainism and Zoroastrianism, but the entire Jewish pantheon is deified because Judaism being monotheistic, precursor to both Christianity and Islam, does not has one god, so they can't make pantheon deities. This should actually be renamed to uh, prophets. So instead, they have a bunch of deified, which would be in other nations, deified rulers um, as prophets, and they all have benefits. So in terms of war, in terms of their basic abilities, um, starting experience and power recovery, not great. We've got experience decay morale of armies, eh. and then we've got reinforcement speed and fort defense. Out of these, on their base abilities, Debor uh, Deborah is uh, better with the morale and the experience decay. However, because these are basically deified rulers, um, in this case, we can't add any, but this is how you would do it. You need popularity of 90, you need, I think, 200 political influence, and you need the family the ruler belongs to to have 800 prestige. You can replace a deity with a person personifying the deity being deified. Um, Alexander starts that if you play as Egypt. And by clicking on them, as you can see, they have a bonus at the end. Moses gives an investment. Deborah here, actually you can see when apparently Deborah died too, which is kind of cool. Um, 
And it's the same thing with Ezekiel. They give different bonuses. Ezekiel, Supply, Fort, not really that great. Deborah gives you um, military experience, uh, which could be useful if you want to get more traditions. But Moses has probably one of the best things in the game, which is a free province investment, which allows you to build super, super tall and saves you tons of political influence in the long run. Uh, out of those three, with that added in, I'd take Moses. In terms of economy, you've got David, Caleb, and Daniel. David gives citizens tax. Caleb gives import routes tyranny. Daniel gives political influence and stability. Um, out of their base abilities, Caleb's better early on when you need import routes, but David up here with the citizen and tax is better overall. In terms of their bonuses, you get uh, two Hebrew citizens if you take Caleb. Um, and convert two employed characters to the Jewish faith rather than two population, which Zoaster does in Zoastrianism. This could be useful if you want your all your employed characters to be of your Jewish faith. Uh, David provides two freemen as well. I would take David here overall based off those bonuses. In terms of culture, you've got Samuel, Solomon, and Ezra. Samuel gives aggressive expansion, chain, state, religion. Solomon, stability, uh, popularity gain and Ezra gives provincial loyalty and slave happiness other stuff Ezra gives stability Solomon gives a permanent bonus to the second temple and Samuel provides 10% religious advances progress so if you click on Samuel it will up your progress to your next religious tech by 10% which is very powerful because obviously you want innovations um, that one's good if you want to get tech otherwise Solomon here with his permanently embellished second temple which you can do multiple times uh is absolutely ridiculously powerful um it's sort of like the moses benefit um so i would probably take solomon just for the embellishing the second temple um if you want tech though samuel will help you with that overall in terms of their bonuses uh solomon's stability is good loyalty from ezra is nice i guess the expansion is the best from samuel as well uh, in terms of fertility, you have the choice between Esther, Abraham, and Joseph. Esther, population, con pop conversion, unintrigated culture happiness, four, and she converts five population in your territory to Hebrew. Very good for a large empire that wants to integrate people into uh, your culture and your uh, into your religion. So uh, very strong. Abraham, you got population growth and monthly food modifier and another Jewish conversion. Uh, not as good as Esther in terms of uh, her conversion bonuses, but you get the population growth. Joseph, you get food, happiness, and you get a uh, huge population growth. Out of them, I'd probably take Esther uh, if you want to convert things. Otherwise, Joseph's benefit of 15 growth is much better than Abraham's passive five. Um, so that is that every deity in the world can have a holy site. As you'll see, there's plenty of them. Um, they can have treasures in them. Treasures give different bonuses. Um, in this case, Judaism has the Stone of Jacob, which makes Jerusalem itself get um, uh, plus 20 extra tax, which is powerful. Uh, by creating a holy site, um, it increases the deities or prophets or paradigm, uh, paragon paradigms bonuses by 20%. And it provides tax building slots and migration. So putting it in a large city um, is usually the way to go. You can destroy them with an army by raising them. You'll steal any treasure. You'll downgrade the holy site. And you'll offend everyone of the religion, basically. Um, can be very useful. Um, in this case, Samuel is the temple in Jerusalem, provides quite a few benefits. Uh, it's plus 30 tax, so tax is actually beneficial there. Um, that's kind of holy sites, how they work. Capturing them is useful. Um, it's kind of fun to play around, move treasures in and out of them to boost your areas, steal loot treasures from other people. Be aware that sacking holy sites with legions now can incur malice bonuses. So if you're going to sack holy sites, use levies rather than actual armies unless you want a negative modifier on your army. Hopefully this has explained religion. I've gone through every religion in the game that I could find and um, basically give you a rundown on the best deities. Hopefully it helps you. If you've enjoyed this very long video, 
Uh, please do leave a like, subscribe, comment, check out my Discord in the description, and I hope to see you all in another video. Bye for now.